Rewind and keep it clear, yo. Let's get off the clock, say no to what's not. Let's keep it vertical. What am I going to do? How am I going to do it? You know, those things actually are tiring at some point. And all of us have felt that. You know, there's been something inside all of us that said, listen, I don't, I don't want to devote my life to constantly figuring things out, planning, guarding against fearful outcomes, living a defensive life where you're just doing things. Why do most people go to jobs? Why do they do a lot of the things they do? Fear of consequences. They believe that there's negative consequences that were in the past and they, if they don't do certain things, then those consequences will get them in the future. And the ego is sitting back in the mind just smiling going, I gotcha. You're in my net. You're in my net of linear time and you're not going anywhere. Don't you think that you can escape me after a millennium? Don't you think that you can just spring into the kingdom of heaven? It doesn't, it doesn't like the Course. Because the Course is so direct at saying, you know, you don't, you aren't free here in time and space. Even the talk about innocence, a lot of times I hear a lot of talk about innocence and I hardly ever see the Course, but Somebody sent me an email with some course quotes, and it was so amazing, this course quote from Jesus, I believe it's from the workbook, where Jesus starts, it's, it's the middle of a sentence, you are guilty in time, but not eternity. Wow, thank you. That's coming from Jesus, that's the way that starts out, that sounds, can't be him. You are guilty in time, but not in eternity. You will never, ever, ever be innocent as a human being. You know how we have a world where we have the innocent human beings and the guilty human beings. The victims, the innocent victims. You believe that they actually, the ego strung together, it's even playing with innocence. It puts this strange, curious contradiction of terms. Innocent victim and guilty perpetrator guilty victimizer, but you will never, never, never know innocence as a human being. That gives you incentive to start to forgive and see that you're the dreamer of the dream, that you've never been a human being, <laughs> you've never really incarnated in the first place. It was just a dream of incarnation. You could call it incarnation, but the spirit doesn't come into matter. Even souls, you know. We talk about souls as if they're like travel, independent souls. The soul is really the spirit, so there's just one of us, there's just one spirit. So once we get into multiple souls and reincarnation and, you know, it's just, it just another way of describing the, the impossible is what reincarnation is. It can, it's, a, it's a belief that can be used in a helpful way because a lot of us were raised with heaven and hell. And that's, hmm. That's not very non-dualistic, <laughs> heaven and hell. But the idea that we're souls and we make it back to God, eventually we all make it back, you know, that's a nice step from heaven and hell, burning in hell. Uh, but then again, we all make it back to God, what, in time? No, we don't. We don't. We never will reach God in time. Because God didn't create time. God is not the creator of linear time. No amount of time, you know how they say, time heals all wounds. No, it doesn't. The Holy Spirit's <laughs> use of time heals all wounds. You see, there's a big difference. <laughs> you know, it's the Holy Spirit's use. But remember, what's the Holy Spirit's use of time? To show you that there is no time. It's not that there's some kind of, <laughs> that the Holy Spirit enjoys it. You know, the, the Holy Spirit will give you everything you need and will renew it as long as you have need of it. But the Holy Spirit would not have you linger in time. That's the key. We're not meant to just keep playing around with time. It's meant to send us into the stillness. It's meant to send us into the I amness that is before time was. I like the grammar that before time was, I am. Mm-hmm.